I'm Liam Harrison, World Muay Thai Champion for Bad Company Gym in Leeds and this is my 10 rounds with Dan Morley Boxing. Yeah, so maintaining the longevity mentally, it, it's been easy because I, I, I just love fighting. Um, I, I honestly could not think of anything else I would rather do with my life. I love fighting, I love competing, I love being in there and pushing my body and I love training. Uh, I'm obsessed by by this sport, so that's been easy. Physically, uh, obviously I've had, as I get older, I've had to make a little bit of a change. You've got to train smarter, not harder. Been in better recovery, better nutrition, like uh, ice baths, uh, yoga, more stretching, more FRC, functional range motion, movement, stuff like that. Um, yeah, so all that sort of stuff uh, has been to help keep my longevity. Yeah, I think it's massively important for fighters to seek uh, challenges in training, especially young up and coming fighters as well. I mean, if you've not been out of your comfort zone in the gym for say the last six to eight weeks or eight to 10 weeks or however long your fight camp is, if you are not out of your comfort zone, when it comes on top in a, in a fight and you're in the championship rounds and you're tired and you're under pressure, you're not going to have what it takes to get yourself through that. So yeah, getting out of your comfort zone in training is massively important. The best fight I have ever seen live was in Thailand in I think it was 2010. It was two ties, Pakon versus Ponsonay. And if you just put in YouTube, Pakon versus Ponsonay, round four, that round was the most ridiculous round in quite possibly in Thai boxing history. It was, it was unbelievable. They just traded for the entire round and they hit each other with some absolutely like, disgraceful shots and punches. And it won fight a year in 2010. And yeah, but it was unbelievable. Both of them ended up in hospital after that fight. So yeah, put in YouTube, Pacorn versus Pawn here, round four. And uh, yeah, enjoy. Yeah, what separates the elite fighters from the rest? They have just got that little bit of extra in, in everything. Um, if you, when I'm, I've had a lot of knockouts in my career and I've had a lot of stoppages. I think I've had around 51 knockouts or 51 TKOs. And... When you're fighting a, a good fighter, like a, a, a top level fighter, you hurt them and you notice you're hurting them. And they, but the elite level fighters have got that poker face. They've got that little bit of extra heart to fucking keep them going and not give up. They've got that little bit of extra experience to get themselves out of trouble. They've got that little bit of extra sharpness. They've just got a little bit extra in, in every single department. And that, that's what just separates them. They've just got that extra 1% and, um, the heart and the, 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 the no will, they've got the, the no, no quitting them, like the, they won't quit when it starts to get hard and stuff like that. So it's just little stuff like that that make the difference. Yeah, I've been lucky enough to fight all over the world and I've had some incredible experiences. Um, but I think my fondest memory is of actually headlining uh, one of the biggest shows that this country's ever seen in England. I headlined a show at the MEN Arena against a Thai champion called Anawat, a massive knockout artist, um, renowned as one of the biggest punchers of all times in Muay Thai. Um, he'd actually stopped me in the first fight we had as well. And in the rematch, he came over to England and we fought in front of all my friends, my family, at the MEN Arena, massive crowd. And I actually schooled him and, and beat him quite convincingly. So yeah, that's probably my, uh, my fondest memory. So the psychological aspect of fighting is massively important. Your mind has to be as strong as your body. It's okay doing a, a 10, 12 week fight camp, getting your body as strong as possible. But if your mind's not as strong as your body, it's not going to matter. And there's people out there who work with many fighters and athletes, boxers, Thai boxers. Uh, I worked with Vinny Shawman in the past. Uh, he's helped just get my mindset uh, bulletproof. So yeah, like I say, if your mind isn't as strong as your body, then you shouldn't be in the ring. Yeah, as a fan, my favourite era was probably the early 2000s, 2002 to 2004, five-ish, when you had like the Barrera and the Morales and their their trilogy, I think, I think it were a trilogy, their, their fights that they had was absolutely unbelievable. Obviously, you had Pacquiao like just breaking into, making a massive name for himself around that time. And yeah, they, they were my favourite fights and my favourite era to watch. Um, other than that, probably the 90s when Chris Eubank and uh, Nigel Benn and those boys were around. Yeah, the greatest boxer I've seen in my lifetime, probably Floyd Mayweather. I mean, he was a defensive genius towards the back end of his career, but when he was pretty boy Floyd in the early days, then he was a, 
he, he, he wasn't afraid to get stuck in and throw down. And I, I really remember taking serious notice of him when he put an absolute hammering on Otero Gatti. Um, obviously, I enjoyed watching his fights before, but then when he did that to Gatti, I was like, oh my days. Um, yeah, and I started really like getting into his fights and watching him more then. I've had quite a lot of uh, standout moments in my own career, but probably last year I won fight of the year 2022 um, against a tie called Mung Tai. So probably that one. Um, I got knocked down twice in the first round and got up and knocked him down three times in the same round to, to win. I got a, a big bonus off the, off the promotion and yeah, one fight a year. So probably that one. <laughs>